Black Sea Danube really reflects the whole 20-year history of, of the GEF. It's a, it's a really good example. The Danube River starts in Germany and Austria down to the Black Sea, which has six countries around it. So maybe altogether there might be 16 or 17 countries in the area. When GF started in the pilot phase in 1991, uh, there was no strategy, there was no GF secretary. I certainly even hadn't joined the bank back then. But those that were in the bank and the participants of the GEF uh, realized that war was starting to happen here in, in Europe, in the Balkans. And before that war started, there was dialogue about, gosh, we need to get together in Europe. There's a there's the European common market, new countries that have been formed here in Eastern Europe uh, that need to, to come into the economic fold and they're, it's, it's a new Europe. So one of the first projects was the Danube Basin in the pilot phase of GEF. And that project got all the different countries to, to work together. And uh, in 1994, while that project was still going on, um, they saw the GEF uh, strategy and the importance of a transboundary diagnostic and an action program and they actually changed their project to, to do that work as well. The Danube Basin Convention was negotiated during the first GEF International Waters Project. It became uh, operational or enforced during the second one and we actually had a third one to actually help implement a project to deal with the key transboundary concern they identified. The countries all identified the pollution coming down the Danube River from all the little places, including Germany and Austria, as creating a real problem here in the Black Sea, where there are too many nutrients and oxygen demanding substances like human sewage or industrial waste coming down that took out the oxygen from the Black Sea, made the algae grow, the algae die, the oxygen grow, the fish die. This is called eutrophication or nutrient over enrichment. There were many sources of fertilizer elsewhere, livestock wastes, and human sewage. We actually held a stock taking meeting with all the countries and the World Bank and UNEP and UNDP because we thought something called a programmatic approach might be of interest here. We not only have regional projects in international waters, but there are national projects on whatever the issue is in that country that creates the transboundary concern. A regional project you'll never really get a change over time because it's about working together, about creating institutions. Um, you really need to go to investments. The World Bank joined us and they found that, uh, that there was an opportunity and interest in the countries to borrow for operations in the agriculture sector, which was creating pollution, the municipal sector, human sewage, the industrial sector, in industry, wastewater, and in restoring wetlands in the basin. All of the, uh, the rivers have floodplains, but they're all walled off because we build houses in the floodplains. You want farms and crops to grow. So the river is kind of constrained behind levees or dikes or revetments, whatever you might want to call it. So we actually had some of the projects that removed these dikes and levees allow the wetlands to flood again and we're finding now as a result that this is the most cost-effective way to stop pollution not just building concrete and steel at the source but allowing the wetlands to assimilate the contaminants and grow biodiversity from it.